Hey everyone, this is Nick, and today we're gonna take a second look at the ChinkPad A1 and Jing OS, because there are a lot of things that I didn't tell you in the first review that I made. On that note, if you haven't seen that video review of the ChinkPad, check it out in the card up top, it's basically mandatory if you want to understand what I'm talking about here. You done? You watched it? Okay, perfect. So now let me tell you all about the things that I didn't tell you about ChinkPad and Jing OS, and all the things that I didn't tell you about today's sponsor, Linode. Linode is an amazing way to get your Linux server up and running. They've been voted top provider for infrastructure as a service by G2 and Trustradius, and they offer tons of one-click deployable servers. For example, Owncast, letting you run your own Twitch-like streaming server with video broadcast and chat capabilities, or Apache Guacamole, which is the easiest way to get your own fully featured Linux desktop in the cloud, accessible from anywhere in the world. If you prefer gaming, you can also start your own Valheim server on Linode, and they also have one-click servers available for CSGO, Rust, Arc, or Minecraft, among others. Now, on top of that, Linode is currently upgrading all their data centers with faster NVMe block storage, which means that every server that you currently have with them or that you plan to open with them will have access to that faster storage at no extra cost for you, which is pretty freaking amazing. Now, I personally run my own Nextcloud instance and only Office document server, both on Linode, and I couldn't be more satisfied. I can only recommend them. So if you want to give them a shot and get started, click the link in the description below and you will get a free $100 credit to start your own Linux server. Okay, we're going to begin with the roadmap for Jing OS and JingPad, because fortunately it's not a ship it and forget it product. It's something that is going to get updates and the company has published a roadmap for the whole month of November to basically let users know what they can expect. So we already went through the major event of Jing OS, which I guess is poorly phrased English to say that Jing OS or the Jing Pad was released and made available, probably. We also already got the Jing OS ARM 1.1 update, which I got on my Jing Pad. It's mostly a bug fix update and feature optimization. I will talk about it a little bit later in this video, but it doesn't make the Jing Pad into a fully fledged iPad competitor just yet. And we also passed the date where the company has started working on the Open Jing OS project, which is basically opening up all the source code for that project. And you're going to tell me, the source code to Jing OS is already open and available on GitHub, and you're right, but it's only the code for the x86 version, the one that you can already download and install on your laptop, your desktop, or any computer that you own. Although there isn't really a reason to do so, because that system is super limited for now. Now, what they're going to open up now is the code for the Jing OS ARM version, which isn't open yet. I'd expect them to have to remove a bunch of binary blobs for the drivers and the stuff that they need for Jing OS to run on the Jing pad. And we don't really know where it's gonna land or, or when it's going to be available. So yeah, I appreciate the effort, but yeah, it's just the beginning of the source code opening. Now, more interesting is the availability of Android applications on the 14th of November. And this is something that should only be available on the Jink pad. And yeah, it's one of the major selling points of this tablet. Of course, it's going to be pre-alpha level, so it's probably going to be on the same level as what we already saw from other YouTubers when they got their review units. And on that note, I didn't get one and I'm still bruised in my small, fragile ego. I, I thought I was important. Now, jokes aside, this means that siloading just won't be available just yet. It's probably going just to be a few applications in Jing OS's repos that you can install through the command line, and that's about it. It's still a major feature for this tablet, and it's one of the major things that they teased and that makes this tablet interesting. It's what can make or break it. If you can run Android applications on the Jink pad, it basically means that it is daily drivable. Now, the next item on the list is the bootloader unlock, because at the moment, the bootloader on the Jink pad is locked, and you basically can't install anything else on it until this thing is unlocked. And fortunately, the Jing OS team should allow us to do just that next week, so I will definitely take a look at that once that's possible. There might be problems though, because one of the team members told me that Unisoc was getting on everyone's nerves about this topic, which means that maybe it won't be possible because the SOC developer and vendor does not want to provide what's needed to make that bootloader open and accessible. Now, in the meantime, you just can't grab any ISO and install whatever you want on the Jing pad. It just doesn't work. 
Next, we have the Jing Droid ROM, which is an Android ROM that is closed source and that I guess is installable on other Android devices. I have basically no interest in that and so I didn't really dig deeper in that topic. Now we should also see before the end of the month a port of Ubuntu Touch for the Jingpad, which is super nice. It's not an official port, it's something made by one of the community members, so it won't be officially supported or anything, but it's still cool because it means that we will be able to run other like mobile distributions on top of the Jingpad, which is something I like. I don't really know how that's gonna work without the bootloader open though, but yeah, on paper it's going to be possible. And finally, at the very end of November, the 30th, where I will celebrate my 34th birthday, which is definitely not too old, they will open the Community Edition of Jing OS, which is a fancy name to say that they're just going to ship Jing OS ARM as an ISO. Now, I don't really know who would download that ISO and install it on something else, because it's basically feature incomplete and doesn't really do much right now, but at least the option will be available. Okay, so that's their roadmap for November, and hopefully they can stick to it, because it sounds pretty ambitious. Now, if they can manage to accomplish that in a whole month, I just can't wait to see what they'll bring to Jing OS in the next six months. Okay, now let's talk about the latest update to Jing OS ARM on the Jing pad. It was released just a few days ago, and I installed it on my device, of course. The changelog isn't super exciting, but fixes a few issues that have been making using the tablet quite difficult. The main ones are related to energy consumption and charging speed, which were two big issues with the Jink pad. It discharged extremely quickly, and it took a very long time to charge back again. I can report that this is now fixed. Sorta. Battery life has improved a lot since the update, going from about 4 hours of YouTube video playback to around 6 hours. It's still not incredible though, and far from what you would expect from a tablet running an ARM CPU. Now looking at what Apple does with their tablets and their M1 Max doesn't really make that Jingpad look so good in terms of battery life at least. The charging speed is also a lot better than it used to, and the tablet no longer requires as much time to charge as it did to discharge. Now, a few issues and bugs have also been fixed, but I can't say that I was affected by them really, so I didn't really notice any specific change. In terms of applications, the Jing OS store now loads a lot faster, and it got a few more apps compared to the last time I showed it, including Ocular, Rhythmbox, VLC, Kodi, Krita, or MyPaint. It's still relatively empty and I don't really understand the process of adding apps to that store. The apps that are added aren't specifically optimized for touch. VLC has super tiny controls, Ocular has its super small menu bar for example, so why bring these apps one by one when you could just open the gates to the repos and let users use whatever they want, since nothing is really optimized for the tablet anyways? Hmm, I'm having déjà vu with that complaint. What other distribution doesn't really let people install graphically from the repositories already? Hmm. Now, apart from that, you now have access to the full menu bar for console, the terminal app, and it's correctly sized as well, so you can really use it to create profiles, save custom configurations, basically use the app completely. The file manager also gains some progress indicators when copying and moving files, which should be helpful since that thing has a lot of storage and you could really end up moving quite a lot of data around. And that's about it. That's not a huge update by any means, but it does fix a few big problems that impacted the use of the Jingpad. Now, I also got a bunch of questions in the comments on the review I made, so here are a few answers about the things that have been asked the most. So on the hardware acceleration front, I thought it wasn't enabled, but after using Mesa Utils and GLX Info, it seems that it is which is disappointing. Performance and smoothness is not what I would expect from something using the GPU to render the animations. I hope I'm wrong and they're not really using the GPU for their window manager yet, or at least I hope that they can work on this soon so the OS feels a lot smoother to use. Because screen tearing, choppy animations and unresponsive touches doesn't really feel like a polished experience to me. Now on the kernel side of things, Jing OS ARM doesn't run on a mainline Linux kernel. Uname returns a Linux Jing OS 4.14 kernel, but it's actually an Android kernel for now. Now, does that mean that it's really running a Linux-based operating system? Is Android really Linux? Is the Android kernel really a Linux kernel? What does even life mean? Now, this is a bit disappointing because it largely implies that the tablet hardware itself 
has no open source specs and open source drivers and as such you need to have an Android kernel with Halium to get like those binary blobs and drivers injected inside it to run. Which doesn't reassure me on the open source ability of the device. Now speaking of which, you can't install other distributions on the Jinkpad just yet. I tried to plug in a USB-C adapter and use a flash drive, but there is basically no way to access a bootloader to even try and install something else, not even taking into account if it would work or not. You just don't have access to a bootloader, to a BIOS or UEFI, you just can't select anything to try and boot from another device. I also tried pressing all the keys on the keyboard attachment at boot and it just doesn't do anything. So we will have to wait for the team to work on opening the bootloader, let's hope that they can do it, but even with that, if the hardware doesn't have open source drivers, I don't think any other distro will really work on that thing. Now, I was also asked about telemetry in the OS. And the x86 version collects the MAC address of the device at the time of activation, at first boot. And it seems that the ARM version can also collect the country of the user, their time zone, and automatic bug reports, but only if you enabled privacy sharing at first boot when setting up the device. If not, only the MAC address is collected. People also asked me about the pen latency and here is a more close-up shot of me using it. As you can see, it's not great. I wouldn't recommend this in its current state for anyone who wants to use this as a drawing tablet. Using Krita, for example, is super stuttery and there is no palm rejection built in these apps or in the tablet, so you tend to draw lines with your hands as well. Okay, so I think this covers all the major questions and updates that I have about the Jinkpad and Jing OS. Of course, I will revisit this device and this software as soon as something new happens on this run, so if you're interested in that, don't hesitate to subscribe to the channel. Now, this video was made possible by Slimbook. They're a Spain-based, Valencia specifically, based Linux manufacturer. They make Linux laptops and desktops for all price points, all budgets. They ship worldwide. They have all keyboard layouts. I only use their laptop and their desktop nowadays. I am super happy with it. So if you want a new Linux device, just check the link in the description below. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't hesitate to like and subscribe and turn on those pesky notifications. And if you didn't like it, you can also dislike and tell me why in the comments. If you don't like YouTube, you can watch all my stuff on Odyssey as well. All my videos are synced there and arrive about a few minutes or hours after they're published on YouTube. And if you really want to help support the channel, you can also join my Patreon subscribers and YouTube members and get access to a bunch of awesome perks, which I won't list here. So thank you guys for watching, and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye!